Hello. In today's challenge, we are going to be making different sized open boxes, or in other words, boxes with no lids. And we are going to be investigating which has the greatest volume. For this challenge, you will need five identical sheets of paper, the exact size and whether or not it is squared or plain paper can be decided based on the age and mathematical ability of each challenger, a pencil, a ruler, scissors, sticky tape and finally a choice of material that you could use to fill each box for measuring its volume. For example, filling each box with dried rice to see which holds the most as an informal measure or filling each box with one centimetre cubes as a formal measure. Here we have chosen to use one centimetre cubes for easier extension purposes only. So let's begin. For demonstration purposes we will be using squared sheets of paper which are 14 centimetres wide and 12 centimetres long. To create your boxes, firstly measure and draw a 1 centimetre square in each corner of your first sheet of paper. Then cut out each of these squares. After that, draw a straight line to join each internal corner to create a rectangle that measures 12 centimetres by 10 centimetres. Then fold along these lines and tape to make a shallow box. Now you have successfully made your first box. In a similar way, you will need to make four more boxes using your remaining four sheets of paper. However, for each of the remaining boxes, the squares in each corner will increase in size. The next will be two centimetres squared, then three centimetres squared, four centimetres squared, and finally five centimetres squared. And in the same way as for box 1, you will need to draw the fold lines. Fold and then secure with sticky tape. So now you have made all of the different sized boxes needed for this challenge, let's get measuring. But before we begin, which box do you think will have the greatest volume? And why? Pause the video while you jot down any ideas. Here we go with box one. As we fill box one with our one centimetre cubes, we see that it is 12 centimetres wide and 10 centimetres deep. We also see that we can only fill it with one layer of cubes, so it is only one centimetre high. To find the volume of box one, we could count the number of cubes used to fill it, or we could calculate how many cubes we have. To calculate the volume of a cuboid, we multiply the width by the depth by the height. So in this case, we have 12 centimetres multiplied by 10 centimetres multiplied by 1 centimetre, which equals 120 centimetres. And to show we have multiplied in three dimensions, width, depth and height, which are at right angles to each other, we also add a small 3 to the unit of measurement to show that it is cubed. So box 1 has a volume of 120 centimetres cubed. What about boxes 2, 3, 4 and 5? 
In the same way, we can measure the volume of these boxes. With our second box, we can see that it is 10 centimetres wide, 8 centimetres deep, and 2 centimetres high. So when we multiply the width by the depth by the height, 10 centimetres multiplied by 8 centimetres multiplied by 2 centimetres, we find that this box has a volume of 160 centimetres cubed. So this box has a greater volume than our first box. I wonder, will the next box have a greater volume again? What do you think? Our third box is 8 centimetres wide, 6 centimetres deep and 3 centimetres high, which when multiplied together gives us a volume of 144 centimetres cubed. So this box has a smaller volume than our second box, but a greater volume than our first box. I wonder how the next box will compare. In the same way, we can calculate the volume for the next two boxes. Width multiplied by depth multiplied by height. So we have now discovered the answer to our initial question. Which box has the greatest volume? Our second box has the greatest volume. Does that mean that no matter what size of paper we start with, the second box with, will always have the greatest volume? How could we check this out? Can we calculate the volume of the boxes that can be made without the need to make all of the boxes in the first place? We could start by tabulating the information we have so far. We know the starting width of the paper we used to make each box was 14 centimetres and that the length of the paper for each box was 12 centimetres. We also know the width of each box, the depth of each box and the height of each box. And using these dimensions of width, depth and height, we could calculate the volume for each box. But how can we relate these dimensions for each box to the size of the paper we start with? I suppose we could start by comparing the width of the paper with the width of each box, which we can rewrite like this, where 12 is the same as 14 subtract 2. 10 can be written as 14 subtract 4. 8 is 14 subtract 6. 6 is 14 subtract 8. And 4 is the same as 14 subtract 10. In the same way, we can compare the length of the paper with the depth of each box and rewrite these values in the same way. In this rewriting of the dimensions of width and depth, we can clearly see the number pattern 2, 4, 6, 8 and 10. But how can we determine which value, 2, 4, 6, 8 or 10, we will need to subtract from the paper width and length when we calculate the volume for each possible box we can make? For that, we need to consider the height of each box. The height of each box was determined by the size of the square we cut out of the corner of our paper at the beginning of this challenge. For example, if a 3 cm square is cut out of each corner of our starting sheet of paper, the final height of the box will be 3 cm. 
But in order to achieve this, we reduce the possible width of the box by 3 cm on the left and 3 cm on the right, or 6 cm in total. Likewise, we reduce the possible depth of the box by 3 cm at the front and 3 cm at the back. In other words, the value we subtract from the paper width and length is two times the final height of the box. For this information, we can now calculate the volume of any box, as long as we know the dimensions of our starting paper and the final height of the box we are calculating for. So, the calculations for our first box would look like this. 14 subtract the 2 multiplied by 1 to find out the width of our box, multiplied by 12 subtract the 2 multiplied by 1 to find out the depth of our box, and finally multiplied by 1, which was the desired final height of the box, to give us a volume of 120 centimetres cubed. We can then repeat this process to calculate the volume for any other box we could make out of the same sized paper, substituting the final desired height of the box in each case. We can also write this algebraically, where W equals the width of the paper, L equals the length of the paper, and H equals the height of the box to be made and where V equals the volume of the box that we are calculating. So, we can calculate the possible volumes of boxes made from different sizes of paper to the nearest centimetre cubed, millimetre cubed, or even calculate to the nearest decimal or two decimal places, and so on. As long as we know the width and the length of our starting paper and the desired height for each box we are calculating the volume for. So who are you going to challenge to make the box with the greatest volume? But that's it from us for now. We hope you enjoyed this challenge. Bye for now.